Hello and welcome to lesson three in this series. Today we're going to be looking at client server and peer-to-peer -peer network architectures. So we've kind of already gone through types of network, we've gone through factors that affect network performance. So we're on to this part here now, which is the client server and peer-to-peer -peer networks. The organization of a network is called the network architecture. At this level, there are two architectures you need to know about client server and peer to peer client server is a network where one computer known as the server provides data for many other computers known as clients a server is typically a high-end computer which is designed to allow multiple users to access it servers typically look after logins and security file handling printing and internet access while often you might just get one server on the network that handles multiple functions, sometimes for larger networks, there might be many servers available and each of those servers could have a specialized purpose. So for example, you might have a file server to store users, documents and files. You might have an authentication server. Don't know why I said that so, so oddly. Authentication server checks whether a username and password match those stored in the database. You might have an application server to run programs across the network, a web server to store and manage web pages, a print server for managing printing across the network, and a mail server to store and handle email. We also have clients. These are the computers that connect to the servers. They request services and resources that they require from servers, such as software and files. The server processes this request and then sends a the response back to the client. Clients do not normally store data for the long term. They might have a local copy of the data while the user is accessing it, but they're not storing it for the long term. Client server networks are the most common way to organize local area networks. They're well suited to schools or organizations with large numbers of computers or where users need to access the same software files. So you've probably got something like this installed in your school where you come into a computer lab, you log into a computer, and you can access the resources that are stored on a central location and download them and use them. And then you can go on to another lesson, log into another computer, and you can access the same resources. So usually with the client server network, the user has to log in with a username and password before they can use the network. The server checks that the username and password are correct. And the technical term for this is authentication. Oh, I pronounced it correctly that time. Excellent. So what are the advantages of client server networks? Well, client server networks are very good at managing and controlling activity centrally. Users' files can be stored on the server so that they can be accessed from any connected client device. Backups are also managed centrally, ensuring all the files are included. Software and security updates can be managed by network managers without the need to update every client computer individually, and activity on client machines can be monitored. User accounts can be managed centrally, including the changing of passwords and the recovery of lost files. And access levels can be controlled for different categories of user. There are some disadvantages though. If the server becomes unavailable for any reason, users will not be able to access their files. Servers can also become overwhelmed by too many requests, preventing clients from accessing their services. Another disadvantage is that server hardware is typically more expensive than ordinary computers, which increases the upfront cost of setting up a client server network. Also, a cyber attack, such as a ransomware attack, only needs to focus on the server rather than each individual client computer. And this is my favorite key on the keyboard. I wish I had this button on my keyboard, the hack button. Awesome. No way. I'm getting hacked. As well as being used on local area networks, we can use the client server network model on wide area networks. And in fact, it's the client server network model that is the basis for the World Wide Web. Web servers are computers that interact with remote users who access them via their browsers. They deliver HTML pages, CSS style sheets, and JavaScript files to the users. So we should all be familiar with this. We all understand that if we want to go to Amazon or Facebook or any sort of um, web service, we log in with different client devices from any location, and we can access that server and then request the information which sends it back to us. 
And we also understand that there are going to be potentially hundreds of thousands or even millions of clients trying to access the same server simultaneously to get that information back and forth. It's a client server network model. The other network architecture we need to know about is peer to peer. A peer to peer network is a distributed system where functionality can be divided among all the network nodes. In a peer to peer network, P2P, all the computers have equal status. There's no clients, there's no servers, and they're all connected directly using cables or wirelessly without a central server. Each computer is called a peer and it stores its own files. Peers are configured so that specific files and folders can be accessed and shared by other peers on the network. So here we can see this different quite clearly with the server based network architecture. We have the server in the middle and that's the most important computer and all the clients can request information to get sent information from the server, but all the files and resources are essentially held here. With a peer to peer network, the files and resources are all distributed across the network and they're all shared with each other across it. P2P networks are easy to set up and can be suitable for small organizations with a few computers or less need to share data and are the model most often found in small home networks. Examples of P2P network activities include wireless printing from a laptop, tablet or phone, ad hoc file sharing such as the use of AirDrop on iOS devices, streaming audio from a device to a Bluetooth speaker, or sharing internet connections via personal hotspots. On the internet, a wide area network, peer-to-peer -peer network architecture is useful for sharing files without the need to store data on a central server. Online communities can make good use of peer-to-peer -peer for file sharing using protocols such as BitTorrent. Now, a lot of people have a negative impression of BitTorrent and related software, but it can be used legitimately. Sharing big Linux distributions and other open source software makes a lot of financial set, sorry, financial sense using peer-to-peer -peer networking and BitTorrent. So, for example, if I create my own open source software, I don't want to have to set up a server and the, all the related cost to handle, you know, allowing thousands or millions of people to download my software, because then I'd have to rent server space, make sure I have enough bandwidth, etc., etc. With a peer-to-peer -peer network, I can upload it once, seed it very briefly, and then once people start downloading it, they can then share it with each other. So it's a lot easier for me to set up and use. However, we can also use peer-to-peer -peer networking over a wide area network to share things like movies, software, and other media. And this has led to a lot of copyright infringements and people sharing files they're really not supposed to. Listen up, seed meat. You are all in violation of Title 17 of the U.S. Copyright Code. <laughs> so what are the advantages of peer-to-peer -peer networks? Well, they're easy to set up and they don't require any expensive or dedicated hardware like a server. Peer-to-peer -peer networks are also very robust as there's no single point of failure. If one device fails, the rest of the network still continues to operate normally. You can lose one peer, it doesn't make a difference. Without a central file server, however, if we move on to the disadvantages, there is no central management or maintenance of a peer-to-peer -peer network. This means that software and security updates have to be carried out individually on each peer device. There is also no centralized backup of files as the files are distributed amongst the peer devices. So each peer needs to be backed up separately and individually. We also have the problem that files are duplicated when they're transferred between devices. This can lead to be multiple versions of the same document which can lead to people using out-of-date versions instead of the more up-to-date versions. It is also possible for peers to go offline when they're being accessed. So you might be downloading a file that you need that just happens to be on one peer, but if that device suddenly loses its Wi-Fi connection or somebody switches it off, you can't continue to download that file anymore. So in summary, network architecture talks about the organization, the theoretical organization of a network. Client-server network architecture is one where the, a computer provides data for many other computers. You have the server that's more important and provides data for all the clients. 
The other network architecture that we need to know about is peer-to-peer, -peer, P2P. And this is a network where all the computers have equal status and can all be a client and a server when required. Well, I'll bid you a good day now. Good luck with your studies.